On the afternoon of August 25, 2009, numerous people were enjoying the facilities of the Porcupine Campground 5.5 miles east of the community of Miles, while other people were boating in the water. It was 1.30 p.m. when all of a sudden the unthinkable happened. A loud thundering noise was heard followed by a crashing sound. Looking across a section of Lake Roosevelt in Washington State, a large wave became visible which was initially 20 feet in height. As people scrambled to escape, there was only 35 seconds to get out of the water. The now 12-foot high wave then crashed into the Porcupine Campground, damaging the docks, several boats, and a swim platform, while also pulling several people into the lake. What had just occurred was a 283,000 cubic meter landslide from a hillside 4,700 feet east of the Porcupine Campground, causing an estimated $250,000 in damage, but luckily causing no injuries or deaths. While this might initially seem like an unfortunate and unlikely event that will not repeat itself as landslides can occur in a wide range of localities around the planet given the correct circumstances, this is not actually the case here. As, on that same hillside where the collapse occurred, you can see two older collapse scarps which existed before the 2009 landslide. But there is more. Across the shorelines of this 130-mile-long lake, there have been 22 landslide-created tsunamis since 1944, at least one which produced waves that towered to 65 feet in height. While the vast majority of these events occurred between 1944 and 1953, three events have also occurred since 1965, including two landslide-generated tsunamis in 2009. Here is a quick overview of these events, and I must note that the exact locations of where these events originated from might be incorrect. On July 27, 1949, a 2.5 million cubic meter massive rock on the opposite side of the lake north of the city of Lincoln collapsed and generated a 65-foot high wave. In April of 1969, a 2,300-foot long section of the northern shoreline collapsed, traveling across a section of Lake Roosevelt. On August 25th of 2009, a 283,000 cubic meter landslide occurred east of the Porcupine Campground, while on January 16th of 2009, an 800,000 cubic meter landslide generated a tsunami six miles west-southwest of the community of Little Falls. On February 3rd, 1951, a landslide about two miles northeast of the Kettle Falls Bridge generated a wave that picked up numerous logs, throwing them through a part of the lumber mill to a location 10 feet above the lake level. In February of 1953, a group of three landslides generated a 16-foot high wave from a location 1.7 miles south of the Kettle Falls Bridge. But, by far, the location which has produced the most landslides is a spot 3.5 miles south of the Kettle Falls Bridge, which is referred to as the Reed Terrace. There, 16 landslides occurred between 1944 and 1953, one of which generated a 65-foot high wave. Today, numerous collapse scarps can be found on this very hillside, and in my opinion, it could still be potentially unstable, so I would recommend against placing a boat there unlike seen in this Google Earth imagery. As, much like a doctor telling a person who had a prior heart attack that they are more likely to have another one in the future than an average person, a section of land which previously had a landslide is more likely to have another landslide occur in the future. In addition to an area with a previous landslide or visible collapse scarp, areas of inclined flat slopes that look like this also have a potential to collapse. Another piece of evidence that a landslide once occurred is hummocky terrain or a series of small hills existing in the water in front of what appears to be a collapse scarp. Every single one of these 22 landslides occurred on a weak rock referred to as glacial drift that represents variable sized sediments deposited by glaciers and glacial meltwater. Due to the non-uniform particle sizes, this rock type can be prone to landslides. When Roosevelt Lake was created in 1941, the water table increased causing water to soak into the bottom sections of several unstable areas. This destabilized those regions, but also at the same time, the mass of water in the lake held up the bottom section of the slide. Yet, when water was released to generate electricity, the lake level dropped. Without the water holding up the bottom of an unstable region, it finally collapsed, creating an inland tsunami. The reason why so many landslides occurred between 1944 and 1953 is that initially there was not a limit to how much water could be drawn down in a single day. The number of landslides has since been reduced via a rule that states the maximum decrease in lake level can only be 18 inches a day. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.